Howard Oakley is head of survival medicine at the Institute of Naval Medicine in Portsmouth, England. Just make sure that things like zips. Here, these Gurkhas, British Army soldiers from Nepal, are learning how to avoid frostbite. How cold are the hands? A little bit, in a little bit cold. Yeah, he's good. On the, on They're the about to be... leave for Greenland, and so are testing cold weather equipment in temperatures below minus 30 degrees Celsius. That's minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, so say so this was my partner that was going to help me with cold hands. Yeah. Hands? Yeah. Can either get right in there yeah. and jam it shut in there. Yeah, yeah now I'm getting now slightly warm hands. Captain Andy Fowle is the expedition's technical expert. We're likely to experience conditions down to minus 30 and also strong winds over 100 miles an hour, so we obviously need to prepare for both of those. OK, then. And all we're going to do is just make sure that things like zips, headdress, and everything's done up. We need clothing that actually cuts the wind right down. And also we need warmth as well within our clothing. So what we've got is a layered system, you know, starting from thermals, going to a mid-layer, and then the, you know, the Gore-Tex actually to cut the wind right down as well. As the layers go on, our thermal camera gives us a chance to see how efficient the clothing really is. The white areas are where Gurkha Kim loses most heat. The darker red and blue spots are where he's best insulated. In just his thermals, he wouldn't last long. But as more layers go on, he becomes better and better protected. Now he's ready to face the cold. Without the right preparation, no one would last long in such extreme cold. But new research is showing that cold isn't always a killer. And it was first discovered in a situation the Gurkhas know only too well. The battlefield. I, c I can't describe what it was like. I thought that was very close. I rolled over and when I looked down, I realised that my right foot had gone. I was probably laying there for three to four hours before I actually was administered with any fluids. And I was losing blood all the time I was doing it. When somebody asked, would I make it, it was no way. David Gray was just 18 years old during the Falklands War. After having his foot blown off, frostbite was the least of his worries. He should have died, but he didn't. Amazingly, he wasn't the exception. Many soldiers with horrific injuries survived the long wait for medical care. There were 580 wounded soldiers in the land battle under the most desperate conditions, and many of them waiting hours for, for treatment. And yet from that figure of 580, only four of them died of their wounds. The one thing all these casualties experienced was the extreme cold. The cold I can remember probably more than anything. Numbness, fingers, face. There's no doubt that something happened in the Falklands War. Something rather magical. Jim Ryan is another Falklands veteran. Many of them should have died, but didn't. They probably fell down, lay very quiet. They will have bled out significantly but not to the point of death. Perhaps sufficient fall off in blood pressure to form the first clot, the best clot. But then the cold took over, slowing their metabolism down, reducing the oxygen requirement of their bodies. This meant they could survive despite massive blood loss. I think in this situation, and many people would agree with me, hypothermia, a mild degree of hypothermia, is positively protective. Yeah, I think it just slows the whole thing down. These amazing revelations in the Falklands kick-started research into cold therapy. Now, some hospitals are using it to save trauma victims' lives. But could the cold help prevent injury in the first place? 